And I think we realized how much we are a family and a global family and how natural that is. And there are a lot of scenes between us that were as heavy as any drama we've ever done. Chloe said that from the top, like, I cast you for the bill you represent these characters. And this gave me pause for thought, because I was like, Richard's like a demigod who shoots lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and my guy's a human who works in the natural history. <laughs> we come from a generation where you really had to be tough to get through, and it's yeah. like, yeah. we are like, yeah, we're making a movie. Hi, I'm Devin Kogan. Welcome to Entertainment Weekly's Around the Table with the cast of Marvel's Eternals. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So I'm so excited to get to talk to you guys in person. Um, I would love to start by kind of just talking about the film as a whole, you know, which is sort of a little bit different from sort of what we may have seen from Marvel before. Camille, I'd love to start with you. Oh, good yeah. call, good call. If, if it's cool. not too much I pressure. Think we start with <laughs> yeah. I really do. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll throw the question out there and you guys can see who wants to answer yes, it. Yes. So I'd love to know sort of for you guys, what is it that sets the Eternals apart from some of the superheroes that people may have seen in the past? Actually, Lauren is the expert on all the superhero movies. Done, done, done. We have some like Marvel experts in this table. I think Kumail's got the best answer. Oh my God. See, we're okay. such a dysfunctional family. I love yeah. that. <laughs> I'll get started and then please somebody jump in. <laughs> you know, the thing that is most obvious, obviously, is that we're a truly global superhero team. Usually superheroes have looked like in a, uh, and looked very specific, and this we sort of looked like the world, and that was important to Chloe, you know, was that this team looks like the world. But more than that, everybody in the movie, all the characters are so different, and everybody brings something, everybody occupies a different space. It, it really feels like a family, but it genuinely, genuinely does. I know everybody says it feels like a family, but this really, really does feel like a family, and everybody is like so specific and different and unique. and A whole new range of powers Yeah, that the MCU hasn't seen before. Why didn't you guys help fight Thanos or any war or all the other terrible things throughout history? We were instructed not to interfere in any human conflicts unless deviants are involved. By who? Yeah, and, and Salma, I know you play Ajak, who's sort of the leader of this unconventional family. How did you guys want to build that sort of like camaraderie and, and sort of family relationship? It was really easy. It was it, it was kind of like automatic. Again, a lot of credit to the director. I think uh, she was brilliant in the casting. I, I, I mean, I think uh, a lot of us identify in different ways to our characters. She actually casted lovely people and humble people. I was terrified of Angelina. <laughs> <laughs> she was the nicest, the most down to earth, the most humble, the most warm, the easiest to work with, the, you know, generous. I uh, was a little, of, a little bit afraid of Donald's. <laughs> <laughs> and he was not. We're nice. the scary one. And he's such a teddy bear. I mean, yes. And um, it, 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 it's just a group of really, really lovely people. He, I thought he was maybe a little bit of a diva. Also, <laughs> you know, hottest guy on earth? No. Also, the other hottest guy on earth? <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't see him. We have a hot cat. Goofball. We have a hot cat. It was very easy. It was very easy. I haven't seen some of them for centuries. Hi. Hello. This is what the end of the world looks like. At least we have front row seats. You know what's never saved the planet? Your sarcasm. Yeah, that was something I wanted to ask about because I know Chloe has talked about in casting, she wanted to cast people who she felt, you know, sort of, uh, there was something that they, they could identify with each of these characters. I would love to sort of go down the line and, and hear from each of you, what did you most see yourself in, in the character that you play? Well, I, yeah, Chloe said that from the top, like, try and play these, I've picked you, I've cast you because I feel you represent these characters, try and play them as close to you as possible. And this gave me pause for thought, because I was like, wait a minute, Richard's like a demigod who shoots lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and my guy's a human who works in the natural history. <laughs> and you've cast us to be close to our... <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that was that was an interesting thing about it is that she was like, I don't want you to 
stray too far from who you are. I want you to play this very close to you. And that's part of what she was bringing to this movie, I think, is a kind of a basic realism to this universe. But your character is very approachable. Yeah, and, lovely guy. And fun. Yeah, know. but there's more to you than meets the eye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's all the mystery in there. What about you, Salma? What, what did you most identify with um, about Ejak? When she talked to me the first time, she said to me, I really wanted you for this part from the beginning because you have a different kind of strength. I'm still trying to figure out what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I think she explained it to me, but I, I was just so shocked they were calling me for the movie. I, I, I only understood half of what she was saying. <laughs> and I do, I do think I'm, I'm, I'm strong. I don't know in which way is, is different because, ah, she said you can be, it's a vulnerable strength. Uh, that's what she saw in me, and mm. I think that's the character. It's a strength that is vulnerable because what gives her a lot of strength, it, it comes from, from empathy, and I, and I think that's lovely. Five years ago, Thanos erased half of the population of the universe, but the people of this planet brought everyone back with a snap of a finger. What about you, Angelina? What did you most... I was going to say, I think it'd be fun if we answer each other's. I want to answer <laughs> yes. Selma's. I know why Selma's saying <laughs> No, but you know, I think that it's quality is similar to Angelina's. It's almost hard to say what you are Angelina. versus what, right? We should so. do that next. Well, what, did you, what did you recognize uh, in, in each other then? Well, that's going to take, I mean... The <laughs> what I'm saying <laughs> next time. No, but I'm you saying, but you're very maternal, first. right? She's very, I am very maternal. That's really what we should use. I really am very maternal. It comes like very naturally to take care of people and to and you took care of us. But you have to say what is about your right. character no, because you were so I always avoid this question. I know you were so comfortable in it. This question is so hard for me. Because she has... Well, I, let me jump in here, Angie. I'm going to okay, jump thank in you. because, <laughs> you know, I'll speak for you. I mean, because we are family, right? Mm -hmm. and I got you. I think that I just feel like Angie has so much in common with her character with Dina because the goddess of war, she is so full of love and she's not afraid to actually step in and fight for what's right. And you see that. You see that in how she actually really comes in for she fights for human rights. And I mean, we all know, you know, Angie for her work and she champions for women's rights, for, you know, for all the things. And I feel like she just, you know, you see that within Angie. I gotta oh, say, I gotta God. say, Angie is obsessed with justice. And I think that's a character trait, but also she's incredibly loyal. If you get her, <laughs> she is, I've seen that. It's loyal and devoted, and you can see that in the relationship with Gilgamesh and with us. And she's a survivor and a fighter. And I think, and you know what? Fearless, fearless. Right, and, and I that's so agree with you, Selma. I agree with you. I think crying, that there, so. there were moments when we were shooting when Chloe would was talking and give us direction, and we would stand there and look at each other. We're like, nobody would say anything, but usually Angie would step in and say, okay, let's see here. So let's go through that again with let's us. Break so we down. could stand up and she would speak for us and fight for us. Yeah, and I also really. Uh, okay, sorry, can we're gonna move keep on to somebody else. Like, <laughs> hey, you gave us this. Or I have like a therapy session. Is the as you're very love. Love. You could have can asked you tell her. They, they know I need family. <laughs> like, I need this. Like, I, I thought it was so wonderful how your character carries strength and weakness at the same time. You know, the, the vulnerability and the power having it be one thing that you can be both things at the same time uh, was it was really, really exciting to watch. And also the way that you reveal your character through your physicality. We've talked about this, you know, I I, I talk a lot. My characters always you're, talk a lot. You're physical. Just, uh, <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> but with you, you know, it was really interesting to see you reveal character without words. It was um, inspiring and intimidating. We've loved these people since the day we arrived. When you love something, you protect it. Continuing down the line, Don, what was I it? Uh, I don't know why she picked me, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, now we all get to go on Don. Uh, <laughs> I heard that uh, the Gilgamesh uh, was, was not written for an Asian actor in comics, but uh, they changed it to Asian hero. So uh, I thought it was a very smart idea for global audiences. And you're a yeah. protector, and yes. you're the one that we all go to. Yes. yes. And, and you've got that, and you're strong, and you're 
gracious the, and you're yes. kind. The strongest one with the biggest heart. Yes. That's yes. right, because you you fight with brute strength. And also the biceps, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. Real. They're real, they're real. And also you, how you know so well how to manage action, comedy, and yeah. drama. This is, yeah. in terms of acting, it, I was very impressed oh, in, in you. how you can do uh, that so subtly. You your family. Go yeah. Yeah. The other. No, it's great because your fighting style is brute strength, but then your inherent sweetness is so yeah. apparent in the rest of the scenes, in the rest of the movie. Like that really is, it's so, it's so heartbreaking, your character. It's, yeah. I, I was so glad that Chloe and our action team was so open-minded. I was, I was designing a lot of those actions before, and then they uh, let me do this uh, lot of action scene here so I can design uh, my own action scene from uh, my boxing skills. So it was and great. we were all coming to him for some uh, tips and some moves. <laughs> <laughs> we were all going, what do you think about this one? So he was uh, really supportive in that way. It was great to have him. Yeah, he's been doing the action for a while. He's amazing at it. I was very excited. I remember I got this because you don't see the script. Not a this is the thing, right? You sign up, but yeah. we. Yeah, you the don't secret know what of Marvel, you sign up and you're not sure really what you've agreed to. <laughs> yeah. They don't show you the script. You have to sign the paper and not, 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 it's like a marriage. So then you, as you go through, you say, oh, okay. I'm, <laughs> but then when I remember today. realizing that we were a team. And Lauren, what about you? What was it that you really connected with, um, with Macari? Well, first of all, I'm just gonna, speaking about Macari, I would say that yesterday felt like was my wedding day. <laughs> I mean, and you know, and seriously, you know, literally my marriage to the MCU, I'm getting yeah. married. This is our celebration <laughs> as a family together and celebrating. And that just makes so much sense when you actually join the MCU and now all of us are eternals, you know, it isn't a commitment and how can we bring that kind of commitment, you know, by being real, by bringing our real authentic selves to the movie, to the story? And I think all of the Eternals, all of the characters are supposed to be superheroes and demigods, you know, fancy robots. But at the same time, I think that we are all portraying our human flaws. Mm. And that is where all of us come in. I think that, you know, as ourselves, we actually bring our flaws to our characters. So now about Makari. Um, I, we both like to run. <laughs> <laughs> we, I love books. We both love books and we both love art. That's it. <laughs> and she's a fierce protector. Yes. Yeah. I loved your relation, your little friendship with Drug in the movie. I loved that. It's really sweet. I think it's more than a friendship. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying not to spoil anything. Age appropriate. I also <laughs> think, uh, Lauren, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that for Macari, it's very important the sense of community. I think for her character, yeah, super important. Absolutely. Her family, her community, and I think Lauren is like that too. I feel like Lauren was one of the people that really kept us all together, yeah. right? Balanced yeah. everybody, connected to everybody. That oh, helps. I Okay, so this is definitely awkward. Let's move on. Let's move on. Here she comes. Nah. Yeah, Leah, tell, me, tell us a little bit about what you most identified with uh, with Sprite. I was able to really relate to her because, you know, she's 7,000 years old, back in the body of a child. And I felt a lot of my life that I've looked younger than I actually am. And I've sort of dealt with that in a way. So I was able to bring that into the character and really understand her. Yeah. I think How old are you now? I'm almost 16. Sorry, I'll just say real quick what <laughs> Emily driving. said, my wife said yeah, after I'm watching right. you, she said, you really can't, you really felt like a 7,000 year old in the body of, you know, you were 13 or 14 when we shot yeah. it. That was, Emily came to set and she saw you do a scene and she was like, it's really impressive because you talk to her and she's Leah when, then when she goes on camera, you really feel that sort of weight uh, uh, that, that, that she carries with her all the time. I definitely think that not only she's an old soul, but that she's so mature in so many ways for her age. Leah, yeah, maybe you want to tell them at, at what age you graduated from high school? No, <laughs> at 13, yes. Wow. And she's already studying in college for a while. And she's very romantic. Oh, I think that's true. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. But she We're going to embarrass you now, just like families oh, do at dinner. Man. But she can be a smart <laughs> too, huh? which is also a part of the character. Yeah, and I will say on top of that, I mean, I don't know why, but when I actually see Sprite and I see Leah, 
I'm so reminded of this generation and children who are carrying this world, mm. you know, and it's really a huge responsibility, you know, and I feel like that the younger people like yourselves actually are carrying this big sense of maturity and responsibility for making sure that the planet is mm -hmm. still going to be available to us as humans. I think one of my favorite um, comparisons in the, in the movie is, is Sprite as Tinkerbell. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was great. You did a great job. Yeah. Was that well, your idea? No, I no, said no, the but words he, he's, that he's the one who said it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a beautiful <laughs> moment that the, the comparison of yeah. Icarus is Peter. And you're the last, you're the last boys. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I'm nope. happy being We're the last boys. boys. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I am. <laughs> I am Captain Hook. I guess. So now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are both gone, who do you think is going to lead the Avengers? I could lead them. <laughs> and then to wrap it up, uh, Kumail, tell us a little bit about what you, you Unfortunately, know. we're out of time. <laughs> yeah. I have to move on. I mean, it was very similar to what they said when I met Chloe, you know, I was like, uh, yes, of course, I'm gonna, I, I will do the movie that you want me in. And I asked her, I was like, who is Kingo? And she's like, Kingo, it's you. And then she walked away and I was like, <laughs> help, what does that mean? Yeah, that's very close. And so then we sort of talked a bunch and I decided to, you know, because we're all, we're not any one thing. We all sort of contain like opposites, you know, sometimes you nobody ever feels the same way day after day. So I was like, oh, let's, like all they're saying, all their characters are like s strong and vulnerable at the same time. I was like, how do we find opposites to play? So, you know, to me, he's like, he's selfless and very self-involved. He's sarcastic and he's very sincere. He's childish and also wise in some ways, so. And superficial and very deep. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, superficial and very deep. So it was just sort of like finding fun opposites to play. There's also, if I, now I'm gonna get in your space. <laughs> but I think you, as I think where you overlap is generosity because I think you are very generous with I think when you do, even doing any kind of comedy in life, right, you make people laugh, you connect to people, you have to understand and feel people. The same with the way he entertains, or the way you are when you come into a room, or the way you keep our spirits up, or the way you also can, if you feel it's also time to have a serious conversation, but it seems to be coming from a place of generosity. And, yeah, I've, Thank you. and I will say one last one that I love about you, the sense of wonderment. That is like one of the best qualities one can have as a human being because you stay in love with life. And I think that mm -hmm. Kiko has that sense of wonderment, that excitement about everything. And I think you have that. And I think that's one of your greatest mm -hmm. attributes. It, it's connected to passion, but it's not just mm -hmm. passion, it's that wowness, you know? And you're old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happens when you're like, well, 13, 14. Yeah, usually, usually it's beaten out of us by now. <laughs> oh, but, but for that. Very I'm very jealous that you're oh, still man. like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, my friends from college are here. Oh, sure. oh boss. Perfect timing. Welcome to the set of Shandar Dastane Icarus. I'm playing you. You like the costume? We need to talk. Tell the director I have some notes for him. We need to talk to you in private. Oh, Karan, he's worked with me for 50 years. I trust him completely. Actually, when we first met, he thought I was a vampire, and he tried to stake me through the heart. I have apologized so many times. Not quite enough times. Very close, though. I'll let you know. Oh, I have to get ready for the next scene. Come to my tent. We'll talk there. One of the things I really love about this film is, is that central relationship between Thena and Gilgamesh. So I wanted to ask you, Donna and Angelina, what was your most memorable day working together? Well, um... This is like, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of her anyway, but uh, um, uh, this is the first time I met her. And then uh, I've been in the, this industry for a while. And then Ash, you know, she's saying, but uh, I felt like uh, uh, we were old friends, finally got to work together. We were looking out for each other always. So we became a real family in the movie. That's mm -hmm. why uh, I enjoyed work and then it was really great, you know. Thanks to her. Oh. I was so, I'm a big fan of, of Don's. And so I think, as I said, as I looked through it and realized we do both have a history of, of different films, but, but also action. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so the, the, that we yep. could get together and play, but also fight together. And I was very excited also to see um, there aren't a lot of relationships like, like theirs. 
represented, usually between yes. a man and a woman, there's an obvious romance mm -hmm. that's, that's presented. Their whole life is a bit mysterious, but you know that they, their center is like two soldiers who are unbelievably loyal to each other and look after friendship. each other. And, and a deep, deep respect and friendship and, and equality that's not stated, it's just, it just is. And they would die for each other. And, uh, and they, both, they both need each other and they, they balance. So I, I felt that that was, it felt very special. And it's true, when the first time we met, it was as if we'd known each other forever. Yeah. We, <laughs> so we get, we, we're just happy to hang out together. And I, th I think the audience feels that. Yeah. yeah, definitely. You know, I learned from watching Selma and Angie, I realized, well, what you do on camera is just a part of our job. I feel like, you know, you, you you guys really took on the job of being sort of the morale of the set. You know, it's it's, it's hard work. You work long hours shooting 4 a.m. in the middle of the woods, you know, <laughs> but you guys like really work to create a sense of community. Uh, and we don't whine like the millenniums. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, some of work ethic is so uh, intense. Naji, we so yeah, we're like sure. warriors. We come from a generation. <laughs> we're here to work where you really had to be tough to get through and it's yeah. like yeah. we are like yeah we're making a movie yeah. let's go we talked about that yeah. you do know? you remember we did. Right. i mean and she's been thrown on a pit with snakes and she's like bring them on i can do this <laughs> so it's kind of like that love for film and yeah the 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 honor in saying i'm a professional you know i'm gonna do yeah. this you can count on me I, I will be there all around it because it's not just what's in the camera, it's how you handle a whole shoot. I remember the day you came to set and you had memorized this entire monologue that I think was two pages long. And Chloe was like, oh, you didn't need to learn it, that's okay. <laughs> and you were like, ready for it. Yeah, yeah, that was something I wanted to throw out to, to any of you guys. When you think back to filming, um, was there a particular scene or, or a day on set that, that most sticks out in your mind? The woods were really fun. We stayed up really late. <laughs> it sounds like the younger person. Well, well I got to go home. <laughs> <laughs> we were up till two in the morning. It was great. Yeah, well, the you guys older people for were like. Hmm. I'll tell you what. I, I had a humbling moment because I got to a location that they had been there. He, he was complaining about the the dirt storm, and I was like, so what? You know, you get there, you open your eyes, even if you're being stabbed by the thing, you just gotta like, get out there and do it. Oh my God, when we got there, first of all, they had to like grab me because I'm trying to walk in the stones with the weird shoes with a little heel hidden because I'm so sure you have to hide the heel. And I, I'm wumbling, I have like three people pushing me through the wind, you know. There was so much needles coming at you, you know, not just the eyes, you could feel it everywhere. And I said, oh dear, I don't know. And I had like three people pushing, and you get the position and the wind is making you like this. Yeah. And we all with our eyes closed and they said, okay, one, two, three, duh. and then they erase it, but the pain you cannot erase. <laughs> no, no, it's not so the, right it's right the pain thing. you cannot erase. And you have to stand there, you're like a superhero, yeah, like you're dying. Yeah. yeah, and then you're... I also remember, and I think all of us actually were glowing after that because there was some deep microdermabrasion. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Do you remember the day um, Soma? It was raining and it was freezing and they weren't going to make her go lay in the mud uh, for a scene. And she was like, no, I want to get out there. I want to go get in the mud. I want to make it look good. And it yeah. was freezing because cold, it's for the other actor. Wet. It yeah. was It was really late. It was hours. But then it's not the same for the actor not to, to, to pretend there's something there or it's a doll. Even if I'm not closing my eyes or saying lines, the human energy and the connection, I think it helps actors. I've worked with actors who are not there when, it, when they're off camera, right? Someone else is reading it. And obviously that's frowned upon, you don't do that, but you really took it to another level in that your performance when you weren't on camera for the other actors, for us, was just as Very good similar. as when you were on camera. And I remember Absolutely. this no. a moment where you give a speech and it's just all of us standing in a row. And each time it was our coverage, you gave the speech everything and you made eye contact with the I person mean, it's really you like yeah. going around the camera it was so important to you I it's like I like my job it's not just for the camera yeah. I enjoy every minute of it and and I enjoy looking at your, your reaction and there were some scenes where I had problems I went to Angie 
And you know, we were just getting to know each other. And uh, I said, help me here. I have this problem in the, in the this and the that and da, da, da. And my God, it was amazing. And you know, the process of getting there, talking about it, I enjoyed every minute of it, you know? And then actually after having that, doing it. And there were moments where they said cut and we just looked at each other. I remember, yeah, when our scene we was like, the one I remember. Yes! <laughs> yeah, you know, you you know, know when you got it. Yeah. It's that thing, that's what, that's what it's meaningful because the movies sometimes they do well, sometimes they do bad. It's the process, what you did in the process, how you enjoy it, how you enrich yourself and your life. Yeah. And, the connections that you make that really stays forever, regardless of the result of the film. And I think what's interesting is it's, it's you go into this and it's a Marvel film and you're dressed in these outfits and you know that, and that's kind of, you walk into it that way. And I think what t took us by surprise and what I hope will take the audience by surprise and believe it will is they're very heavy themes in this film. Very, it is very human. It's very much about being human. It's very much about love and family. And so what, we discovered and why we're so close, I think, is because we did come as ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think when we watch the film, we all discover something about ourselves we didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And I think we realized how much we are a family and a global family and how natural that is. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of scenes between us that were as heavy as any drama we've ever done. Oh yeah, you have some really heavy yeah. dudes. And she did it every time. Look, I can't cry. I can do it well, you know, you have it, mm, I don't know, if after the fifth time, because they're going for another <laughs> angle, I start getting lazy with the emotion. And I can, I can do it, but it starts getting, she's a robot. She or, or an emotional wreck, it's this angle, <laughs> <hard. laughs> this angle, the other angle, I'm watching her and I go, oh my God, how does she, every time, every time, you know, and also that's why I think I wanted to do it with each one of you because I love working with each one of you. I love working with, I mean, he's so still and he gives you so much. I was so impressed. I didn't have any scenes with him. I know. And I am devastated about it. Yeah. I'm devastated, we have to do something. Yeah. I think I, we should all start writing a list of what we want what yeah. we, for, the, for a for sequel. Santa, we need the audience, we need the Santa, fan base Santa to help us yeah. get this yeah. done. Yeah. This has been uh, yeah. Entertainment Weekly's Around the mm. Table uh, with the cast of Marvel's Eternals, uh, which is out uh, November 5th. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Thank, thank you. you.